All right, this is MTG Buddha again. Um, back today, um, things have changed, so they've got some new stuff on here. So we're going to look and see what I'm going to play. Um, the Arena Cube draft. I like cubes. Cubes are fun. Oh yeah. This is, I don't understand why they do this. This 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 is a phantom event. The cards you draft don't go into your collection. It's it's just a bunch of bull. I mean. It's a digital format. Why not stick it into your collection? I understand if you're drafting a cube in paper, not getting to keep the cards. I have two cubes. I've, I mean, I'm designing a third cube, and I don't. I understand in real life. Yeah, you get your cards back because the point is you draft it again. This is a digital format. There's no reason for you to not get to add those cards to your collection other than the fact that they want to be greedy and try to make you spend your um, rares and mythics to craft new cards that you would have otherwise been able to get from this. Just raise the cost to the normal cost. I mean, you can take a few of the rares and stuff out of it. It doesn't have to be super... I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. I'm not doing that. I, it's annoying. I don't really feel like doing that tonight. Um, let's see, any other things? Let's see. They do have that gladiator thing. Where was that at? Or is it already gone? I guess the... No, no, it's right here. Spotlight gladiator. Um, it's a singleton thing. You know what? Why not? Um, I think there's supposed to be some decks that it gave you to, like, use. No? I was thinking that they gave you decks, but choose your deck. I was thinking that I'd heard that they were going to give you some decks to use, but I guess not. Um, this says there's one card, so I tell you what, we'll just go in and... Yeah, I don't really feel like making a deck right now. We're not going to do that. We're just going to go in and do a quick draft, I think. Because, like I said, I don't feel like doing that. And I don't feel like doing the other draft and not getting to keep the cards. It's annoying. All right, so, all right. So, Lion Sash, obviously, I'm going to take that. That card is really good. I like it. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, this... The draft I did the other day, I drafted green and white and had a six and three. This card basically won three or four of my matches. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't record all the matches, but it's a little annoying. So, but yeah, I'm going to take this. Uh, if this wasn't in the pack, I might would take the Goshen Tie of Shared Purchase. Um, Befriend of the Moss is a good card too, but yeah, we're definitely taking this. Lion Sash is just really good. Um, uh, I wouldn't mind Vanishing Slash, but I'm a really big fan of Spirited Companion. I mean, it's, I mean, I know it's a two mana one, one that just draws you a card, but I really like Spirited Companion, uh, but I do like kill spells. So, um, artifact enchantment or tapped creature. Then if you control an artifact and an enchantment, create a 2-2 two -two Vigilant Samurai token. Uh, I think I'm going to have to take that because I like kill spells. This, if I was in red and could do like a bunch of artifacts, you know, that would be good. But, I mean, I guess Lion Slash is technically an artifact, so. But, I mean, of course, burn spells are nice, but... I think I'm going to go with this. Let's see. Uh, here's another kill spell. Um, so, leaning toward possibly taking that. Um, yeah, I think it's just the best card in the pack. So, all right, let's see what we got here. Um, let's see, this has a lifelink. This is a ninjutsu creature. Um... I think I'm probably going to take the ninjutsu creature. Tempted to take that or this.
I think I go for the Ninjutsu creature. I don't think I've drafted a black white, so we're gonna we might try this and see how this goes. Um, yeah, we'll definitely take the shrine. Let's see if I uh, oh yeah, there's another kill spell, so we'll take that. Um, I'm not super fond of this card. Befriending the moss, good card. Probably going to take Befriending the moss. Um, yeah, we'll take Befriending the moss. Uh, you're already dead. More than likely going to be the pick. Although, I'm tempted to take this. Over a second, you're already dead. Yeah, I think I'm going to take that. Mm. Well, yeah, we'll put that in the sideboard. I don't know if it'll make a cut. Same with this. I don't know if that'll make a cut. Uh, this will probably wind up making a cut. Let's see, energy back to choose a creature type. Sure, we'll take it and put it in the sideboard. Um, yeah, at this point, just throwing whatever in the sideboard. So I currently have eight cards in my deck. Uh, the rare is Thundering Raiju. Which is not a bad card. But, potentially taking this. Wouldn't mind to have this. But. Yeah, we're going to take that. Um, so, at this point, there's another roadside reliquary. Um, let's look at my creature count. Currently it says I have four. Let's see, let's flip over this way. Let's go instant and sorcery. And, alright, so I have one, two, three, four, five. So essentially I have five creatures right now. Um, The reconfigure on this isn't too bad. Um, I might. Would consider taking that. It's either that or a debt to the economy. I mean, this is okay, but I think I'd rather just take the Takami. Um, I actually do kind of like this card. Especially if I wind up with a lot of two minute things, but this is probably what I'm going to take. Let's see. Currently, I only have two creatures that would fit into this, and yeah, I think we're just going to take this. There's another Reign of Truth, so that's possibly going to be what I take. Can you name Shrine? I can't remember if Shrine is technically a creature type. I don't know. Um, I think it is a creature type, so. Yeah, I think we're just going to take this. Okay, that's the only black card, and I'm not super excited about that. I don't have a lot of ninjas and rogues right now, so this potentially could go into my sideboard. Uh, we get a Spirited Companion. That's nice. That would be okay. All three, all four of these actually are decent, but I think I do actually kind of want the Spirited Companion. Let's see. So here, I could either take this. I could take this. Uh... We'll take that and put it in the sideboard. Alright, so we get this, which I really want. I wouldn't mind the arrest as well, but I think I would rather have this. Um, at this point, I think I take that. Um, do I want a second one of those, or, you want, or do I want a second one of the roadside reliquary? Because I do have a roadside reliquary. Yeah, I do. Um,
So a five drop or a card that's not going to give me a color of mana, but could potentially let me draw two cards. I think I'm just going to take this and we'll sideboard it because I'm not sure if I want to right now. Sure, we'll take that. Take that to the sideboard, 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 sideboard. All right. So currently I have 15 cards in my deck. There are a couple cards in my sideboard that might want to make it the cut. So, um, let's see. This might be my pick, but then again, I like this card as well. Um, let's see. Creature card with mana value X, where X is the number of modified creatures. Do I have a lot of ways to modify creatures? Let's see, Lion Sash will modify a creature. This doesn't put a counter on anything. Um, doesn't put a counter. Yeah. Don't really have a lot of ways to do the modifying. I think this is probably what I'm just going to take in that situation. Um, we'll just take that. Because <clears throat> I would like to have an arrest. Um, this is potentially the pick, but then again, this might be. That's decent, but I think I'd rather have this at this point. Okay, so this might get picked. I do like this, but I do have a lot of enchantments right now. This would allow me to cast something from the graveyard. Um, could potentially take another Befriending the Moths. Black cards that I could take. This one... This one's all right. Um, that one's okay. What's my curve look like? All right, let's go ahead and put these back since I was all right, two and one. All right, so my curve's actually kind of low. Got a lot of two drops and three drops. I have four, four drops and one five drop currently. So taking another four drop wouldn't be the worst thing. Yeah, we'll take another four drop. Um, let's see. So yeah, so I get this guy. We'll take that. Um, I've discussed the fact that I'm not real fond of that card. So we will probably take this since it is, you know, the multicolor card for the color combo that I'm doing. So, and it does have some cool effects. Um, I think this I would rather have over that. So we'll take this. Um, and of course I can always take one of these now if I want. So we'll take it. Um, if I was in blue black this would be, I mean the fact that rolled back around. Um, I think I'd put this in a sideboard and we'll consider it. Take this. Take this. Sideboard is probably not going to make cut. Probably not going to make cut. Eh, maybe. We'll see. Alright. So, we have drafted. Alright. And, as always, I'm going to remove everything and start fresh. So, I'm going to get rid of all the cards from the deck. And then we're going to start fresh. Um, let's see. So, this, yes. This, yes. This, yes. Both of those, him. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, debt to Kami. That, that, that. Let's put this in. So the question becomes now. Do I put this in? Well, I'm putting that in. I don't think I really want to do this. I don't have any reason to do this. I mean, um, yeah, there's no reason for me to do that. I'm not splashing a color that I would need for that. So now I could throw this guy in. It'd give me two copies of him. If I do, that puts me at 41. I could take something out. Uh, let's look at my... Currently, it says I only have nine creatures in my deck, which is kind of 
not true. But let's see. Let's go through here. So instants and sorceries will move all my non-creatures. Let's see. Let's move my enchantment creatures over to, let's see, the saga creatures. Let's put it that way. Um, saga creature. Let's go up with this. Uh, instant sorcery. Instant, instant sorcery. Regular creature, regular creature. All right, so currently I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoops, accidentally took Spreading Companion out. Um, so currently I have nine creatures and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven enchantment sagas that will turn into creatures. So I technically have 16 creatures in my deck. And I have You're Already Dead, which I don't want to remove from a deck because it's a kill spell. And if you know me very well, you know I like killing things. Kill spell. Kill spell. Kill spell. Kill spell. Kill spell. Pseudo kill spell. Pseudo kill spell. So I'm not removing any of those cards. It's not going to happen. Um, if we reset the curve so that we can see exactly how the curve lays out. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Five, five, four, which honestly, this is probably most of the time going to go into the two slot, not really going to go in the four slot. Um, because, I mean, very rarely am I probably going to be casting that for its actual casting cost. So I'm not going to even consider that. Let's see, and what is the conditions on this? Um, yeah, we'll stick it in the forge just because um, more than likely I'll be able to cast it for three, if not four or two. Um, so we'll put these back like that. Okay, so my curve is fairly low. It's not super high. I could technically, I guess, cut a land and go 16 lands and be at 40 exactly. Um, I could cut a enchantment. I don't know which one I would cut if I do. Because um, currently, let's see, this is for enchantments and artifacts. So currently I have four artifacts and 11 enchantments. So I don't think I would want to cut this because this could potentially pump something and make it just huge. Um, again, not removing the kill spells. Um, don't want to get rid of that. I mean... I think I'm going to keep that instead of getting rid of it. Um, not getting rid of that. Not rid of that. Not rid of that. So, yeah, I don't really think I'm getting rid of anything. I think I'm just going to go 41, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, we're just going to do it. We'll go over. It's fine. We'll see how it rolls. After the first game, I might go in and cut a land and try to play a game or two, see how that shakes out, but we'll see. Either way, I could just get arenaed, so. First hand, not the best, but not the worst. And I get to go first so I can play this on turn one. I'm good with that. I have a one drop, a two drop, and a three drop, so... I would have rather had a one less land and a fourth spell to start this game off, but... I'm not going to send it back because it has four lands instead of three when I have a one, two, and a three. So, I'm going to play the one out. Okay, so, I think i just go ahead and play this.
If he kills it, he kills it. If he casts a creature, I can always, depending on what I draw, put this on it. And be able to attack for three. Oh, nice. So I said. Okay, so I think I'm just going to cast this before I play a land. Alright, and we'll just play the black land. Okay. Um, so, now. I can cast this and have him exile a creature, which would be this one. And then attack for three. Which I think is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Target player exiles a creature they control. You only have a creature. So that's it. Attack. Alright. Let's see what he does now. So nothing. Okay. Um, Alright. We're going to play this then. What's he gonna do? I can see him having some way to like exile an enchantment or something in hand. And that be why he's not doing anything. I think I'd rather have him, if he's gonna kill something, I think I'd rather have him just kill a spirited companion. Alright, no one move to attacks. See so if he does anything. You have nothing, sir. You have nothing. Alright, so. I wonder if he just had, like, a big creature that he, he was like, oh, I'm going to build up to this big creature and play it, and then I'm going to kill him before he gets there. Of course, if he does play his big creature now, I can just do this. Because he's only played, what, two spells? Yeah. He's only played two spells the whole game. So, I don't know if he kept just, like, a, a really land-heavy deck or... Oh, okay. So he's going to do that. So he's going to put that on there, which is fine. I don't care. Uh, we'll give this plus one, plus one. Play my land. Tuck. I don't care if I lose a life. That's fine. I ain't attacking it. So now if he plays your creature, I can just kill it before the end of his turn. Alright, so he's going to kill one of my creatures. Question becomes, which one is he going to kill? Spirit of Companion. Does he have anything else? He must have just drawn this card. There's no reason he wouldn't have played this earlier. I would have loved to have had, like, two or three copies of that, even. Such a good card. I didn't even see any copies of that in my draft. Alright, yeah, I'll pass. I mean, I can only attack him for one. I don't think I have any way to bounce my creatures, do I? Yeah, I don't think I have any way to bounce a creature. So, this is going to flip. Oh, yeah, I do, because I can ninjutsu. I ah, forgot about that. That's going to be good. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll ninjutsu this in. Replay that. That'll be good.
So I think I have three ninjutsu creatures. I have this and the one they killed earlier. I think I have, yeah, I have two copies of this one, I think. I think he sees the writing on the wall and he's just like trying to annoy me now by letting things play out. Alright, so, combat. Yeah, I think this guy's just going to be a jerk and let his timer run down to annoy me. Alright, let's move to the block step. Ninjutsu. Submit one. So if he has no way to kill it or anything, he will take three. And then I'll replay this and he'll die. I think he realizes that now. So he's going to show all those time around. Yep. Well, this makes for riveting viewing. Someone just letting their timer run down to be a jerk because they know they're going to lose anyway. Yep. That's what he's doing. I mean, he's got three mana. I can't think of anything except for maybe a destroy target artifact or enchantment, which if he had, I mean, I don't know why you would just, wouldn't just go ahead and snap that off right now. Uh, yeah, he's just being a jerk. That's all he's doing. So, which is fine. Jerks are going to be jerks. All right, let's do it. Put him out of his misery. There we go. Alright, so one went down. So, I am not going to take a land out. We're going to roll with 41, and we're going to see what happens. We're going to keep rolling. Let's see. Over win two. So we just played a green-black deck. I don't think green-black is necessarily the greatest. I don't think black-white is the greatest in this draft format either. I mean, like I said before, I think green-white and blue-black are probably the two best color combos. And I think red-black is probably the next best. In my opinion, anyway. Um, yeah, this is super keepable hand. I have no reason to not keep this. I can play everything in my hand, plus I have Lion Sash. Of course, I'm not going to play Lion Sash on turn two. Um, hopefully, I will draw something else that I can do on turn two. Because I want to get another creature out and then get at least four mana. So that, I, oh yeah. Um, I want to get at least four mana. So that I can immediately reconfigure this onto a creature, so that if they have a way to kill it, I can go, oh, okay, yeah, so this is still a thing. Hmm. Alright, so we are going to just go ahead and kill this. We're not going to let him get any extra special abilities off of that. So, he can discard, if he does, he gets to draw. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to rummage, he can rummage. That's fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just play this. And then I'm going to pass. And we'll see what he does here. And I might go on and cast the Death of Kami. Um, yeah, that's, that's a thing, I guess. Let's see. What is this? Whenever a samurai control... Let's just, I should have done this before, so, yeah, I should have done that before he did it. But 
this still won't get to attack because it doesn't get haste for getting the second combat phase. So, um, let's go ahead and play a land. Play this. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and play this out. I don't care. So we'll see what he does here. I mean, I'm sure he's gonna attack. Oh, well, that's that's a thing. Yep. Okay, so I think I play that and then I think I go ahead and play Alright, so we're gonna tap this for colorless, this for white, play this. We're gonna go ahead and tap this, this, reconfigure this to here. And no attacks because otherwise he's just going to die. And I'm basically going to die here. I mean, there's not really much I can do at this point. I'm basically just dead. Even if I block, I'm dead. I mean, it's not going to do anything for me. He's going to attack for seven, of course. I'm just, screw it. I'm just conceding. We're going to the next game. That was not very well. Yeah. That card, annoying. Very annoying. It's one of the few times I've seen a samurai build actually do something. Because usually the samurai is the fact they're attacking alone doesn't really do that much, but... <sighs> oh well. Let's try it for a win two again. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, him being able to put that dragon on out there and give indestructible, that that's annoying too. Because even if I had been able to block with something big enough to kill it, it was indestructible. What do you think I was going to be able to do about that? Alright, um... Sure. Opponent goes first. Is he there? Okay. So, land, go. Play the white land out. We'll cast this dude for two. For basically no effect. See what he does. That okay. So I think it's worth attacking on my turn to see if he's willing to jump. If he doesn't, then I can cast this. Yeah, I think that's what. Yeah, we're gonna just do that. We're gonna attack, and he does block. Okay. Um, so do I want to kill it and keep my guy? Or do I want to hold this for later? Because um, the next turn I would have to cast this. Uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and kill it. It's fine.
because next turn, if he plays something with a creature that's mana value 4 or greater, I can do this. Get rid of whatever he cast. Exile in it. Yeah. Okay, so he's going to play that. Hmm. The question becomes, does he want to tap this to sack one of these two things? And he probably isn't going to want to do that. So, we're just going to go ahead and attack. See what he does. Well, ninjutsu. If you control an artifact and an enchantment, so I need to have both. Okay, so if he's using that to draw and discard, I'm liking where I'm at. What's the man on that for? Okay, yeah. So, we can do this. Getting rid of this. Attack. And at this point, I think I just want to go ahead and cast this. Not even bothering to yeah because next turn I could cast this and start getting two twos so because again he's doing this to draw and discard so I think I'm in a pretty good spot because I can either cast this to get this out and a two two so basically five mana for six six of power and then if you cast a creature and I need to, I can cast this. So, yeah. So I think we're in decent shape. And he discarded a kill spell. Okay. Alright, so now, do I cast this? Okay, so I have one, two, three. I would have four artifacts and enchantments. So I would get plus four to this. But that's all I could do this turn, is just cast this. Or I could cast this. Yeah, I think I'm just going to cast this. And we're going to put it on this. And we're going to attack with it. Make him take seven. And I gained seven, so I mean that's that's not nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, and he's drawing and discarding again. I say I think at this point he'd been better off casting that and sacking one of these to make some creatures off of it. No blocks. I'll take the four. I don't care. All right, he's gonna make some tutus. And this is going to flip here in a second. Alright, so I do now have two white, so we will put it on this again. Go ahead and do this, and so the question becomes, do I... Let's see. Artifact or creature return to battlefield under sound of control in the next end step. Um, so... Yeah, we're going to attack with that. He's going to block with that. I'm going to gain 7 life back. I think I'm just going to cast this. I'm going to get a 2-2. Two -two. And we'll see what he does now. Okay, so I'm guessing he goes gets a land and then sacrifices it to put a counter on something. Which I'm okay with. And if he's going to do that, like I say, he could either sacrifice this to put a counter on one of these, or he could sacrifice this to this, getting a 1-1. 
which it looks like that's probably what he's going to do. Which I think he only gains one on his turn, right? Let's see. No. Okay, he only gets the token if he does it on his turn. So, he would have to do it before it goes to my turn to get the token. And he's going to kill that. Yeah. But, next turn I can play this to get it back on top of the deck. Which I'm okay with. Um, yeah, so this is going to flip. I'm going to play this. Let's see, so we're going to start by doing this, I think. Let's see, what is it? Just check my graveyard just for... Yeah, okay. So, put target creature from graveyard on top of your library. Um, I think at this point I don't attack. Yeah, no attacks. I have better options if I wait. Because... I mean, I can always, if he kills something this time, I can always do this in response. Use the channel ability to keep something from dying. And if I use it on this, I could exile this. I could just channel that at the end of turn to exile that anyway. That could be a good option, actually. Yeah, it's fine. I don't care. So he's got one card in hand. He can't use this ability anymore, because he doesn't have... Any, well, actually, this is artifact, isn't it? Yeah, he does. So, But if he does that... Alright, so... I think I might just be better off doing this now. I'll come back at the beginning of my next end step. I should have done that on the end of his main pace. I did that wrong. I am a dummy. Um. Yeah, I think we're going to choose not to attack. This is going to come back as an enchantment. We'll exile that. Yeah, I did that wrong. I should have done that on his main phase before he went to his end phase. And then I could have just attacked and basically killed him. But I'm stupid. So. We all do stupid things sometimes. It'll be alright. And he's. Wow. Really? Another one of those? That's annoying as all get out. That's really annoying. Hopefully I draw something good. Like befriending the moths. That would be nice. I would take befriending the moths. Because I could give this or this flying. I could give this flying. And then just attack. Yeah, that would be nice. Sure. It was not befriending the moths. Alright, so. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, six blockers. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven attackers. Um, so one would get through. I have three of them. He would have to commit two creatures to block to kill. And if he does that, he's still taking a lot of damage. I think we just go ahead and attack. Do it. Do it. Get. I'm gonna put the onus on him, make him decide. 
Math is for blockers. Math is for blockers. So does he put two creatures in front of it? He does. So now by doing that, he leaves himself with only five creatures to block with. He can always throw the 1-1 one, one in front of this. He's going to put the 1-1 one, one there. He's putting two there, putting two there. So he's going to take four, six, eight, ten. Going to take ten, go to one. And lose all but one of his creatures. Yeah, I mean, it's not a good scenario for him at this point. It doesn't matter. I don't care. It doesn't matter. They're both two twos. So yeah, so he's taking four, five, six. Yeah, so he goes down to three. Um, and then I'm going to end the turn. So he can sacrifice this to gain a life and go to four. But then he's still got to be able to block three creatures and he only has one creature on board, two cards in hand. Yeah, I mean... I think I've got this, but I will not block. I mean, he's got to attack, and it's got vigilance, so, I mean, if you attack and I choose to block, it's one less creature I have to attack with, so, I mean, it makes sense for him to attack. And he gets to kill one of my creatures, that's fine. So now, if I have any way to kill one of his creatures, he's dead. Actually, this is just going to do it right here. Well, it's not quite going to do it, but we'll attack with this. Do I attack with both of these as well is the question. If I attack with both of these, he's going to block one here and block one here. They're both going to die. He's going to lose one of his creatures. This is a defender. I think I want to hold these back and just attack with the 3-3. Three, three. In turn. Because this has reach, so I mean, he can block it. So, but it would die. And so, at this point, I think I'm, yeah. Oh... That stinks. But he does not get the 2 2 because he doesn't have an artifact and enchantment. He only has artifacts. So hopefully I will draw a removal spell. Or another copy of a friend of the moss or something like that. Not befriending the moss, but still a decent card. Oh yeah. We will keep that. So, now. Question is, do I attack? I think I do. Yeah, I think I do. Because one of my creatures is going to survive. He didn't even block. He just took it. Okay. Well, that was stupid. I don't know why you wouldn't block with that and try to at least survive one more turn. That's crazy. I mean, the writing was on the wall. I was in... I, my life was so high. He, I mean, he was basically going to die. He didn't stand a lot of a chance, but still... Still, he could have survived one more turn. I would have at least blocked and tried to survive a turn and see what happened. So.
You never know, you never know. But we were, we're both in top deck mode. So, I don't know. We'll see. Alright, so let's try for another win. I think that was win two, so I think we're going for three now. Um, let's see. Yeah. It's not a perfect hand, but I do like this for turn two. So, it'll help set up my other draws. I am on the draw, so I get a draw as well. So... So, I'm expecting to get ninjutsu any second now. Yep, he played a black land, so I'm expecting a ninjutsu creature. Probably the 3 2 lifelink. This guy. See? Called it. Called it. Alright, we're going to play this. Um, let's see, so I have two, I think, okay, so the question is, do I want this now? I think I would rather just try to find a creature and throw both those on the bottom, because if I draw this, let's see, this turns into just a 2-2 two -two first strike. Um, but it's not going to do that for two turns. Next turn I could play this, I guess. And then play this. But if I play this, it's not going to be able to really do anything. Um, so yeah, so I would play this. Yeah, I think we're just going to bottom both of those. Try to find, like, an actual creature. So I have a lot of two drop creatures and several three drop creatures as well, so So next turn I'm gonna gain two of the life back. It'll flip into a two for two first striker. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead. And put that on him. <clears throat> All right, so let's play land. All right, I think I'm just going to have to go ahead and play this out. And we'll see what he does. He's going to tap one of my creatures. I can I feel it coming. Because he's going to play that with a network analyst or whatever it's called. Network disruptor. Yeah. So he's going to play that probably. Tap one of my creatures down. He may have another ninjutsu creature that he can ninjutsu for two. And then he could do all that. It looks like he's stuck on lands. And I'm drawing lands because I've got two more in hand. So... I'm okay with blocking and letting this die. I can always play this back next turn and get it back. So yeah, so he's going to tap that. Attack, attack. That's fine. I will block there to get that off the board. And like I say, next turn I can always play this and bring that back to hand. So I'm not worried about it dying. Um... Yeah, so we'll just play this. I'll choose to return a ninja creature from my graveyard to my hand. And choose not to attack. Let's see, sacks a creature to draw a card. So next turn I have options. I could play all three of these next turn if I wanted to. Because this having first strike gives me really good options with this. Because this could attack, if he, even if he plays something big, he blocks it with the big thing. 
first combat or first strike damage, then do this before we go to regular combat so that this wouldn't die. So, I mean, like I say, there's options. So, so now he's probably not going to have an Injitsu creature because there's only, I think, the one Injitsu creature that's blue. Wow. Well, it's got a really low curve there. So I think we're going to play this. Um, yeah, we're just going to attack. Because he's got like four flying creatures anyway. He knows I have this in my hand. So. We'll ninjutsu this. I'll get three of my life back. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to end turn. Because I can, depending on what he does, if he casts a creature that I don't like, I can always, if it's got two toughness, I can do this. Um, I can always sack this to draw two cards because I have an artifact and enchantment. So... Yeah, I have options. If he attacks with everything, so be it. Alright, so he's attacking with those. He's going to assume ninjutsu something in, but maybe not. Okay. If he doesn't ninjutsu anything in, I think I'm just sacking this to draw two cards. Yep. So, we're going to sack this and draw two. Because I have artifact and enchantment, so draw two. Good. Um, he has no targets at all for that, so probably not even going to bother playing that this next turn, to be honest. Let's see. So, we're going to play this. Alright, I'm going to start by attacking, and we'll see what he does. I'm just going to attack. Because, I mean, he's just got an army of 1-1s. One -one, so I'm not super worried. We'll see. If he does not block, I think what... Okay, so he's going to block like that. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, I think I'm going to play this and just doing it to bounce this back to my hand. And then I think I'm going to do this here and force the issue. So if he wants to um, sacrifice this, yeah, so he's going to do that. That's fine. Um, exile a creature I control. Sure, I'll exile this. Whatever. All right, so I gain three. We'll play Spirited Companion and draw a card. No creatures in my graveyard. Okay. So, let's see what he does. What do you do? What do you do? He's going to attack with everything, including this. Uh, I don't think I even bother blocking it, honestly. Because he's going to ninjutsu, whether, no matter what I do, he's going to ninjutsu something in. Um, and, yeah, I think I just take it. If he has that big 5-5 five, five Ninja 2 guy, he's going to do that no matter what I do. Okay, so I take 5. Sure. If he has something to cost 4, it would be nice. So I can play this and get rid of it. Yep. That will work. Let's play this. Exile this. Um, play a land going to go ahead, let's see, we're going to this, this, casting this, 
reconfiguring to this. We'll attack right now like that. And then next turn, I can start exiling things from his graveyard and making this bigger. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how that goes. Because this card is a beating. And even if he has another debt to Kami, he can make me sacrifice an artifact or, or an enchantment or a creature. And if I sacrifice a creature or exile a creature, I'll just exile. So he's going to bounce something. So what is he going to bounce? That's the question. He bounces that. Okay, that's fine. I'm okay with that. So it's my turn. Uh, let's go ahead and reconfigure this to here. Um, let's attack, see what he does. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. So it's now 3-3. Three, three. Alright. And we will cast this to scry to. Oh yeah. Do I have enchantments in my graveyard? Oops. That's not what I wanted to look at. I don't want to look at my sideboard. I don't want to look at my graveyard. No, nope, I have no enchantments in my graveyard. Um, I think in that case, I think I might put this... Well, nah, we'll keep it. It's fine. But I want the arrest first, so... Attacking for five. If he has the five five ninja two guy, I'm in trouble, but Okay. Um so I think I cast this. Targeting this. Attack for four. Do this. So, he's going to bounce something, which is probably going to be the rest. Oh, he's going to cast Master Splinting. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to be dead. Yep, this is going to be a beatdown. The fact that he had flyers and I just didn't have any way to block them, like, really hurt. So that sucked. Uh, so I think I'm what two and two now. Let's see. Yep, two and two. All right, I want to get at least four wins. Come on. Although, like I said, I wasn't real fond of black and white as a combo, but I do feel like this is not a bad deck. I feel like this is a, this is this deck's worth four wins. I think it's worth four wins. Let's be honest. So play land. We'll play Spirit Companion. We'll play the Goodest Boy, and we'll draw a card. Nice. So 
I really want him to not play a creature. Just pass the turn. Okay, that's fine. It's not a creature, so I'm good with that. So we're going to move to combat. And we're going to do this. Bringing Goodest Boy back to hand. So that I can replay Goodest Boy. Possibly next turn. To draw another card. So it's a red-white deck. Probably Samurai's, since it's red-white, and he's got the katana. And it wants you to do Samurai's. Or Warriors, so. Which, I mean, honestly, isn't it two sides of the same coin? Samurai, Warrior, Samurai, Warrior. Alright, so. We will play a land. And I think instead of playing Goodest Boy, we are going to do this. Because I do not want him gaining life. And we will attack. And then next turn, I have this, 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 this. I can play a combination of a couple things. Ooh, I hate that card. Oh, that's not the one I thought. Still. Not a fan of it. Alright. So, let's play this. Um, Alright, so we're going to... What is the mana curve? Okay, it's only three, so that's annoying. I wish it was four. So we'll do this, giving this plus one plus one for each. Attack for six. Gain six. And then I think we just go ahead and cast Goodest Boy to draw a card. And have a blocker. Because I'm okay blocking with this. So that this can become bigger. I mean, this would become, what, a 7-6 next turn if this survives, if he doesn't attack? If he plays something bigger than 4, I can play this, get rid of it. If he does attack, I block with this. I still get to attack for 6 with lifelink. So, I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. It's definitely not perfect, but I think it's a decent place to be. Yeah, so... I think I'll go ahead and block. Keep it from getting the indestructible counter. Alright, so yeah, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to give this. So we're going to move to combat. Attack. I'm expecting him to do something to untap it. Because I think there's a couple things in white that untap creatures. Oh. Okay, well in that case I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And I'm going to tell you to exile a creature you control. Since you want to be a jerk, I'll be a jerk. Play a land. Play this chick. Yep. And then next turn, I can potentially cast Spirited Companion from the graveyard. He's casting that for no value, then he doesn't have a whole lot. Unless he has another one of those to pump it. I can cast another one of those. Okay. That is fine. Cast Goodest Boy. Um, and I don't really think I have any reason to cast this. He has nothing with no creatures with four or greater, so we'll just pass. All right, we got it. So we got there. We got three wins. Let's try to get one more. Like I said, I think this deck's worth four wins. I think less than four would be a disappointment. I 
Although I haven't really got to do much with Lion Sash. Lion Sash is fun if I can get him out. Get him out and just start emptying their graveyard. Um, I don't think I keep this. I mean, I have nothing to do. This is the only interactive type thing I have that I can do early. And I can't even do it because I don't have two white. So we're going to mulligan. Okay, this I will keep. Question becomes, which one do I want to put on the bottom? I think I put this on the bottom at this point. So, yeah, I think we put that on the bottom. Play land. And if I need to, I can just play this guy out for the two. I mean, it's not not the best, but not the worst at the same time. That's annoying. I hate when they do that. Turn one, just drop that guy out. Super annoying. All right. So, we'll see if he does that again. If he does, that's okay. I'll let it happen. I wish this said artifact or enchantment. It's just enchantments, though. Okay, so he chose to scry, too. All right. So, to play land. Attack. We will choose to ninjutsu this because I want to gain life. Yeah, I would rather gain life this turn. Keep this. I could have played this out, but would have been more mana efficient, but I think getting the 3-2 as opposed to the 3-1 is better. And getting the 3 life, so. Well, there's that stupid card again. Why does everybody have that stupid card? Alright, so. Alright, so we're removing that. And, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and cast this. Sure. I just wanted to be able to block this, essentially. If I draw a land, I probably play this. And give this plus one in flying. Is this to any target or just to player or planeswalker? Okay, not any target, so that's good. I always will think there's there, there is a shrine that does it to any target, which is annoying. So and I'm not going to block that. Did not draw a land, so that's a little annoying. Um, question is, do I play this now? Or do I play this and be mana efficient? And give me another creature that could block and kill this. Because um, if I play this, this is going to get plus one, plus one. It's only going to be a 4 3. He could double block it and kill it with first strike. I think this is my best option. And just not attacking. Because either one of these will block and kill without, yeah, it's just not worth doing. There's no upside to it. Now, like I say, if I draw a land, this is the play. Put this on this, attack for four with lifelink. They go to 12, I go to 23, assuming that they don't attack this turn. Um, we'll see. he get? What did he get? The four? Oh, three mana. What does he do? 
Sacrifice an artifact with mana value X, return target artifact card with mana value X from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste till end of turn. Okay. So. Again, did not draw a land. <sighs> it's not looking like I'm going to win this match. Might as well go ahead and play this. So it's now a 6-5. We'll attack with it just for shiggles. Try to at least gain 6 life. Maybe kill something of his. It's big enough that he can't first strike block it. He has to actually put stuff in front of it that will die. So. And I'll get to gain 6 life. Because, I mean, he's tapped out. He can't do anything. If he blocks it with the two first strike guys, still not going to kill it. He'd have to put another creature in front of it. He could block it with the two three threes. But either way, I'm going to get two of his creatures. Yeah. So I think, I actually think I just take the, both of the three threes. That's what I think I do. Yeah, we'll just take both the three threes. So... And gain six life. So it's going to help things out a little bit. All right. And then next turn, if I draw a land, this is the play. And that's annoying. Choose no blocks. Give me a land, give me a land. Give me land, give me land, give me land. I really want a land. There we go. Got a land. Um, yeah, so this gets plus one, plus one. Play this. Play this. Give this flying. Attack. He goes to ten. Next turn, this is going to be able to get plus one, plus one, and flying again. Um, so I can attack for four. Assuming he doesn't kill it this turn. So you gotta land off the sacrificing of that. So he can attack for two, four, six, seven, eight. He can attack for eight this turn, take me to eleven. And then I would be able to attack for four. Um ideally I draw a land off the top. Get this chick. I think it's a chick. Is it a chick? Yeah, that's a chick. So he's going to do one, go to ten, not a land, target this, all right, but I do get to scry now, so that is a land, uh, question is, would I rather have the land next turn, or I think I'd rather have the kill spell next turn, yeah. So, now, the question is, do I attack for four, taking him to six? He's going to be able to turn around and attack me for uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. He's going to be able to attack me for ten. I could only block one. I think I can't. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can attack. I think I have to just stay back. <sighs> okay. So if he attacks, I think I put this in front of this, this in front of this. Oh no, it's got minutes, so I can't put that in front of that. Um, so I put this here and put this in front of the two two here, I guess, and take four. I think that's what I do. That's a three four. How what how does this get bigger? Yeah, okay. So get another creature. Um question becomes do I do this or do I do this? I think I do this. 
but I don't know which one I do it on. I think I'll just pass turn and see what he does and then use this in response to something to kill something. And then I'm drawing a land next turn, so next turn I can play this and get six power on the board. So we'll pass, we'll see what he does. Alright, so I'm going to in response kill I think I kill this. Cause it's got trample. Yeah, I think I kill that. Ugh, so annoying. You stink, dude. You stink. Yeah, you stink so hard. Alright, so I think we cast this and get our 2 2. And then we just pass turn. But he does now have a 3 3 flyer. Which I do have a creature that can block it, but. <sighs> We're in kind of a stalemate here. At this point, I think I just block with this. If he's got a way to kill it, he's going to kill it. Alright, so it's going to do one to me. Um, so he has no creatures I could kill with this. At all. Um, but it does have Death Touch. Yeah, there are no one toughness creatures on his side of the battlefield. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He has seven. I have six attackers. He could block all of them. Um, Yeah, we're just going to cast it. That's fine. Decline. Because if I do it, which I learned the other day, it's going to kill my one toughness guy. So, we're not going to do that. We're not going to make that mistake again. Yep. Ah, yeah. I still can't believe I did that. That was so annoying. I was thinking the card said your opponent controls, but no, it's just... No, just destroy target creature with toughness X. Doesn't matter if you control it or not. If you control the only one that has that toughness, it's going to die. So. so now we're basically like in turn him saying, if you take one, I need to find a way to kill this. Like this. Move to combat. He has no reach creatures. Nope, no reach creatures. Okay, sure. Attack. And Jitsu. Bounce this back to hand. Do three, gain three. And he has no one toughness creature, so we will decline. And then next turn, I can recast Befriending the Moss and give this plus one, plus one in flying. And attack for lethal. Because it'll be an 8-8 eight, eight next turn if he doesn't kill anything. If he does kill one of my things, it'll be a 7-7. Seven, seven. So, that's the thing. 
And of course, we have to see what I draw, too. I mean, okay, so he's going to, well, uh, is he? No, he didn't. Okay. I guess he decided to try to wait one more turn. He's got one card in hand. So it kind of becomes a question of what card does he have. You know what? We're going to cast this. Targeting this. Next. Attack. And he's dead. Nice. We got it. We got there. Alright. And then if he'd had something, I was going to use the minus two, minus two on the shrine. Get rid of it. Because that at that point was his win con, more or less. Which was doing one damage to me every turn. So are we at four? We're at four wins. Hey. Alright. Let's try for the fifth one. Like I said, I thought this was a four-win deck. I didn't think this was, like, the greatest deck. I didn't see winning seven games with this deck. But, still, we got to four. Um, I am going to keep this. I'm going first. I can turn two, Spirit Companion, draw a card. Turn three, if he hasn't played a creature on his turn two, I can then Jitsu this to bring this back and draw another card the next turn, and so forth, so... I think this is yeah definitely a keep a bull hand, even though these two are both four mana creatures. I mean, they're really two mana creatures. Let's be honest. All right, so I'll play this. I would have liked to have had that in my opening hand, but that's all right. All right, and we drew a third land, so we're in good shape. So next turn, if he doesn't play a creature, I can attack in Jitsu and play this. He does play a creature, so but it is a mana creature. So the question becomes, does he want to block it? And I don't think he will want to block it. So we'll move to blocks. All right, so we will ninjutsu. Bringing this back. And then second main phase, I will cast this. There we go. So he took four damage and I gained four life. I think that's probably like the best way that I could have done that. Goshentai. Alright, so we are going to arrest the Goshentai, I believe. Yep, we are going to arrest Goshentai so he can't use its ability and make tokens every turn. Play Spirited Companion. Draws a card. Plays that. Okay, so... I didn't think you could do that because I put that thing on. Let's see. What does this say exactly? Can it's activated ability? Isn't that? That's a triggered ability. That would be why, because it's a triggered ability. Hmm. Okay. Um. So I think I am going to play this, giving this plus one plus one for each. We're going to move to combat attack. He's going to block with his 1-1. One, one. That's fine. I'm going to gain 7 life. Um, then I am going to cast Spirit to Companion to draw a card. And I get that. Okay, so we're in not too bad a shape here. We're at 35 life. I mean... If he wants to be able to tap a creature down, he's going to have to keep four mana available to tap a creature down. Um, I'm going to put it on Spirit of Companion, so that if he wants to tap a creature, he has to tap my Spirit of Companion. Um, then I think I'm going to just move to combat and see what he taps. Does he tap my 6-6? Six, six? Does he tap my 2-2? Two, two? Does he tap my 3-2? He's going to tap 6-6. Six, six. That's fine. So, I will attack... Like so. And see how he wants to proceed. If he does not black or block the um the rat jacket, I will bounce the rat jacket back to hand. Okay, that's fine. So I am going to begin by doing this, bouncing rat jacket back to hand. And then I am going to do this to get rid of that because I don't want him tapping things down next turn. So. And I 
might just wind up doing this to get rid of this, even though I arrested it. Because he's still able to do that, because I wasn't thinking that's a triggered ability, not a activated ability. So, it's a little annoying. Yeah, I won't be able to get rid of those. So it has a vigilance counter, vigilance counter. Alright, so. Alright. Let's play this. Let's play this. Um. So if I do that, I won't have the two mana to do this next turn. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this to scry. I do want be friending the moss. I think I put the land on the bottom. Um, and then I think I pass turn. Because I can't really do anything with that right now. So I think I just pass turn. And then at the end of turn, I'll sacrifice this to draw two cards. Getting Befriending the Moss is one of them. And when I get Befriending the Moss, I will put the plus one on this. Which will make it one bigger. Yeah. So it'll be a seven, eight. It'll be an eight. Attacking for eight in the air. Oh, you stink. Alright, I'm going to respond by doing this. Oh, that, that's, that's wrong. That is so wrong. That is the wrongest thing that has ever wronged. Yep. Glad I gained so much life, though. But, of course, you got rid of my graveyard, too, which stinks. Because if I had this and I could play Befriending the Moss, and I still... If, if he just killed the things, I hadn't done, and graveyards, too, that, I mean... Yeah. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to play Befriending the Moss. Giving this plus one. Attacking with it. Alright, and then next turn, if I'm look, assume he's going to attack with this. It's going to have to tap, so I'll be able to get rid of it with this. Or no, he's going to give something vigilance. That right, gives it to that. Okay, that's fine. So. So I'm taking 10, 14, 15, 16, taking 16. Sure, no blocks. draw. So this is artifact enchantment or tapped creature. So yeah, so I could get rid of this. Okay, so it's going to get plus one, plus one. Alright, so we are going to play the land. Go ahead and attack for four. Um, uh, I wish I controlled an artifact because I really wanted that 2 2 as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. And we'll hold that and kill the one he puts a counter on. I think that's what I do. Yeah, I think I hold that. Oh, you're a horrible person. You are a horrible, horrible person. Just so you know. Let's see, so if I do that, he's attacking for four, five, six, seven. Oh, this is going to stink. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. So if he just attacks out, I have to block one of the two twos. This would flip over and be a two four. Yeah, 
yeah. Like I said, this was a four-win deck. That uh, the farewell is what killed me, though. Oh, it hadn't been for that farewell. I was in such good shape. Oh, the fact that all my creatures were enchantments and artifacts—that just oh, that hurts so bad. And the fact that he exiled my graveyard. If he had not exiled my graveyard, I'd have been in okay shape as well. Because I then could have uh, played the Befriending the Moss and attacked with, um, what's her name? Where's she at? Yeah. Uh, Norika. I could have attacked with her. I'm assuming that's a her. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Uh, I could have attacked. We're going to call her a her. Uh, I could have attacked with her and got back, started getting back enchantments from her graveyard. But the fact that he exiled my graveyard just stunk so badly. Oh, that was horrible, horrible, horrible. But, all right, so. Um, sure. Come on, I would draft three. Um, yeah, so we're going to save it, sure. So, this was a four-wing deck. Not too bad. Um, so far, this is... I listed it as, deck th as draft three because I've only actually posted videos for three. Um, this will be the third video I've posted because one of my drafts did not record because my computer is stupid. Um, so, yeah, so, so far I've had a four-win in the first one, six wins... Yesterday, then I had a three win yesterday and then a four win again today. So not too bad so far uh, in these drafts. I mean, like I say, I would like I like to get at least four wins. If I get less than four wins, I feel like it's not done what it should. But like I say, that three win deck, I felt like it should have been a four win deck. But, you know, there's just, you know, like I say, this one I didn't think was going to get more than four wins. I was hoping four four. But I didn't feel like it was going to get there. So um, I think it did okay. But we're going to claim prizes and we will go and open up and see what we got. All right. So Kamigawa. Ah, nice. Jim Gataxius. That's pretty good. I like that. I am actually thinking about using this after rotation. So for the standard deck I do, which I haven't done a video on yet, I will do eventually, but um, I might wait till rotation. I might do one before rotation just to kind of show what it is right now and then try to rework it after rotation. But I think I'm going to work this into it after rotation. That's something that I might just put two copies in. It's not going to be like a four of. Um, but yeah, this is definitely something that might go into that deck because it could be pretty sweet if things work right. Um, we're going to go on to the mastery and go on and get rid of that thing that I got from the mastery. Uh, let's go mastery tree. Let's see. Let's continue on with the red. Why not? I wasn't a big fan of Baldur's Gate, so I'm not really worried about any of these. Just not. Okay, this card, I actually like this card in paper. I don't like this card on here. In paper, this card is stupid. Because it doesn't do the same thing that it does on here. Specialize is just for Arena. And I don't really care for Specialize. Um, I like this card in paper. This card in paper is stupid. I think it's 4 in a red. And I think it's a 4-5 with First Strike. Or no, it's just a 4 or 5. But it says on it, whenever you attack, creatures you control get first strike. You untap them, and you get an additional combat step. So your creatures get first, all your creatures get first strike till the end of turn. You untap all your creatures to take an additional first combat, and they still have first strike. And it's just, yeah, it's just so stupid. It's so broken. If you get it on the battlefield and it survives, you're not going to lose. Um when I got it in a Baldur's Gate draft and played it, it hit the battlefield and I had counter spells to hold up for the rest of the game if anyone tried to target it. And yeah, it was ridiculous. So, um, but yeah, I, 
they don't really care for the specialized thing that they did. So, and I haven't paid for the mastery pass. I don't know as though I will necessarily. I might. We'll see. Um, we'll see where I get on the trail. If I get all the way up to here, I might go ahead and pay for it because it'd be worth it at that point, I think. But until then, I'm not really worried about it. Um, yeah, so right now, I only have one of these left. I don't think I have. Yeah, I can't reroll it. I've already done a reroll. Um, don't plan on doing any more drafts right now. I might do another video tomorrow or the next day and do some standard or some brawl. Um, probably not going to do this cube. I might do one of them just to see, but like I say, I'm not a big fan of the fact that it's phantom cards because honestly, what's it going to hurt to give us the cards? I mean, it's not like you're giving us really great rewards anyway. Just give us the cards. I would be okay because these are crappy rewards. Let's be honest. These are not rewards where you're like, ooh, I want to get those rewards. Those are so great. Um, just give us the cards. Don't. It's it's digital. It's not like you're having to print cards. Just give us the cards. That's all I say. And yeah, but. So I might wind up doing one of those just at some point just because I'm bored and I don't want to do Kamigawa again, but and it would be something different, but probably not. But I think that's going to be it for the day. So hopefully you like this video. If you do, come back. We'll be doing more drafts, and like I say, I might be doing some standard and stuff too as well, but mostly we're going to be doing limited on here, mostly just drafts. So... Have a good day, and hopefully you like, subscribe, and come back for more videos. Thanks.